Hello, 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 and welcome once again to Movies That Pop. I'm the Colonel. Let's see what popped up in theaters this week. Now, I'll tell you something about these apes films. They're sneaky. Seriously, I see them coming up on the calendar, I see the trailers coming out, and they all look good, and I say to myself, yeah, I'ma see that. And then I just kind of take them for granted. I'm not overly conscious that they're coming out soon, like I am with a Star Wars or a Marvel movie, you know, where I'm counting the days. I just turned around this week and, hey, looks like it's time for Planet of the Apes. Cool. But, but here's the thing. While I was taking these films for granted, the filmmakers behind them were busy crafting one of the most consistent and resonant movie trilogies of all time. These are fantastic movies, starting with Rise of the Planet of the Apes in 2011, followed by Dawn of the Planet of the Apes in 2014. Every three years, like clockwork, they sneak another highly transporting, thought-provoking, and emotionally resonant epic, with each installment unique and better than the last. That's right, War for the Planet of the Apes is the best of the trilogy, and I can't think of any cinematic trilogies where I could say that about the third installment. Can you? War for the Planet of the Apes is full of raw drama, outstanding performances and the absolute best efforts of a crew that includes the best composer working in films today, Michael Giacchino, a team of amazing production designers, pre-visualization artists, and of course, talented motion capture actors augmented by an army of digital wizards. And you know what? Their work is so good, it's invisible. I told you these movies are sneaky. They did this to me last time, and they did it even quicker this time around. O only a few minutes into the film, I didn't see the effects at all. I never even thought of them. I didn't marvel at how realistic everything looked or how convincing the effects team is at creating this huge cast of simian characters. I only saw the characters from minute one. I established judgments about them, like, hey, that ape's cool, that ape is a real a-hole, that ape I really feel sorry for, oh, that ape died, that sucks. And I didn't even have the thought until much, much later that of course there are no apes. They never shot footage of a single ape, not even as an extra. Everything here is the product of craft. The craft of Andy Serkis, who once again plays the conflicted leader of the apes, Caesar. The craft of the director, Matt Reeves, to draw you into the story so quickly that you take everything you see at face value and feel the complex emotions and drives of these ape characters. Something that Michael Giacchino's score, his best of the year in my opinion, which builds on his themes from the last movie and adds even more catchy motifs to the mix, really drives home as well. Everyone is doing top-notch work to present you with the reality of the story being told, which is rife with surprises and emotional wallops. One of the biggest of those surprises is the ease with which you will find yourself rooting for the apes who are beginning to evolve, not without some internal struggle, into more moral and intellectual creatures, especially after the events of the last film. This new phenomenon, the apes developing humanity, comes at a time when the humans simultaneously seem to be losing it in a development which I will refuse to spoil by talking about any further, but it's just fascinating. This movie floored me with some of the places that it was willing to go with its themes and the reveals that are made about some of the characters. The main character to keep an eye on, and he is fascinating, is Woody Harrelson's Colonel character. He is menacing and smart, and most of the time pretty terrifying. It's an electric performance. The conflict between Caesar, the Colonel, and their respective armies is complicated. It's devastating and downright operatic at times. By the time I got to the end of this amazing film, I was exhausted, I was moved, and I was extremely, extremely satisfied. I award War for the Planet of the Apes an extra large bag of popcorn. Look, when a special effects team moves the cinematic medium forward, like Jurassic Park did with its dinosaurs, or Lord of the Rings did with Gollum, it's obvious, it's notable. Now what's notable in the Apes series, especially now, is that special effects have achieved their ultimate goal creating a reality that's false, but that is so convincing that an audience doesn't just buy it, they never even question it. The technology, therefore, becomes exactly what it's meant to be. Not the main attraction, not the reason to buy a ticket, but merely an effective tool that talented filmmakers can use to tell great stories. War for the Planet of the Apes is one hell of a great story, told by the most talented group of filmmakers working today, and has an impact that I'm thrilled to report you will never see coming. That does it for this edition of Movies That Pop. Don't forget to follow me, the Colonel, on Twitter, at Movies That Pop. And click the icon right down there to visit our channel if you'd like to see more. And support us by clicking subscribe while you're there. And by clicking the thumbs up icon below. I'd like to hear your thoughts on War for the Planet of the Apes in the comments as well. And, and, and I'd like for you to share with me your favorite movie trilogies of all time. Especially if you can think of one where the third movie was the best one. Let me know because I'm racking my brain and I've got nothing at this point. In the meantime, thanks for watching. I'm the Colonel and Apes. Together!